basically. I'm just using the little like six dollars and seventy nine cent min wax clear satin. It's not the water based. This is the oil based. And I'm just using some paper towels here just for this quick test. All right, so. I've masked off one side so that we can see treated versus untreated. Alright, I'm just brushing this on liberally so that the whole thing is coated. You can see there's a little bit of excess on the surface. I'm just going to take this <coughs> and lightly brush that off. <coughs> okay, so we've got a very light coating that's not, there's no polyurethane sitting on the surface, there's no pooling, uh, it's only lightly shiny. And you can see that basically this is the excess that was wiped off and we'll let that uh, cure up. So here we are with the uh, sample now cured over about an hour. Um, as you can see that the treated side does have a bit of a cast to it. it uh, the brilliance of the untreated side uh, really shows up. So it will do a slight shift in color. Uh, you will notice that there is no warping at all. Let's see if I can get my white balance to happen here. There we go. So the treatment doesn't really affect the surface or the structure itself. Um, my little sample here had a very, very slight warp to it already. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, you know, there's no seesaw effect between any of the corners or anything. There's no big bow happening. The surface is still intact. There's no bubbles. There's no rolls that have appeared because of the treatment. Um, and you can see some of the rough edge here. This is from the masking tape that I put on at its full adhesion. I should have kind of softened up the adhesion by uh, dulling up the sticky. So it did pull up a little bit of the surface here on this side. Uh, but that's the untreated versus treated. I'm going to put them under a microscope here so we can get a better look at the surfaces. So here we are under the microscope looking at the untreated side. Uh, the microscope that I'm using doesn't really have precise magnification settings, so I'm not sure exactly what magnification this is. But uh, here is the ink for the word untreated over here, just to give you an idea of scale. Uh, so you can see the surface of the untreated side is quite porous. You can see lots of the fibers of the paper themselves in here. And as I move to the left here, we're going to reach the division between the treated and untreated. And again, you can see a definite shift in color between the treated side here and the much more brilliant white untreated side. Uh, this is where the masking tape pulled up some of the fibers, as I mentioned. But just looking at the surface itself, you can see that the surface is much smoother. Um, you can see how the Minwax your polyurethane has sealed in the fibers themselves. A lot of the fibers that are sort of up and bushy here on the untreated side once they've been treated with the polyurethane, they sort of get sealed back down into the surface itself. Uh, but just, you know, hoping that this will give you an idea of what, uh, what this will do to your foam core. Um, again, there haven't been any distortions, bubbles, there's nothing really that uh, changes the structure of the paper itself when it comes to uh, the way the surface works. It's just that now it's all sealed up. So here we have the final results. Uh, we've got the treated side running down here and the untreated side running up here. You can sort of see the division as it goes up there. And uh, basically I went right down the line, these two are out of order, and used various different finishes of paint. Uh, this is a brand name, uh, what I would consider a premium paint, rattle can. This is the cheapest spray paint I could find. Uh, this is a basic brush-on artist's uh, acrylic, more for 
actual art paintings like what I do sometimes. And this is just a spray bottle of water. Um, and basically I've masked it off and tried each of the different finishes to kind of see what, or different treatments to see what would happen to the treated versus untreated. So going, starting at the top here, we've got the premium rattle can here. Um, as you can see, uh, it does put a, a nice bit of color on there. Uh, it's harder to see in the video, but I'll put some stills up along with this in the post, but the treated side has more of a, a bit more of a gloss to it. This has, the untreated side has more of a dull kind of finish to it, but the color itself is still pretty on both. Um, good vibrancy. Um, the advantage to doing the treated side as opposed to just using the spray is that the polyurethane will offer more uh, water protection, uh, which we'll see later on when we get down to the bottom. And again, that was the premium uh, Rust-Oleum brand rattle can. And then the cheap also uh, did very well on both. Uh, but again, because of this treated side, it's got a little bit of a different finish to it. Uh, and then just to kind of demonstrate how you would not want to paint one of these, um, I used a brush to do straight from the tube uh, acrylic paint. Uh, this is more of a mid-range premium paint. It's not the cheapest acrylic you can buy, but it's also not the most expensive. Again, not designed for painting models or even painting foam core. It's more for canvas. Um, but just to kind of show what would happen. Uh, as you can see, even straight from the tube, not watered down or diluted at all, it did seep into the untreated surface so much so that when I pulled up the masking tape, it actually tore off the top surface of it. Uh, and you can see that it basically tore off this entire area. Uh, however, even though this is not how you would paint one of these models, you can see that the treated side fared so much better. Um, the, it just basically is painted right there on the surface, which is the newly sealed surface. So even though this is not how you'd want to paint a model, you can see that having it treated does offer some advantages uh, as opposed to untreated. And I had to kind of skip over some area where the uh, surface had been peeled up. And then down here at the bottom, I basically took a Mr. Bottle. Hello, Mr. Bottle. And um, lightly and then heavily misted the, the bottom area. This was masked off so that only from here down was exposed to the water. Uh, and in some of the stills that I'll post with this, you can see that the untreated side, after having it sit there for probably about five minutes, uh, before I actually wiped off the surface of water, the treated side, the water just beaded and sat on the surface and never actually soaked in uh, and went any further than the surface itself. Uh, it's basically completely the same surface as it was when I got done treating it and it cured, so the water had no effect, long-term effect on it here. However, you can see that the untreated side, um, we've got some of the surface coming up right here and it's completely delaminated from it. Uh, however, Again, this was exposed to the same spray, and I can't even peel up the edge of that with my thumb. Oh, there, I was able to finally get some of that. But again, it's, it still has good adhesion to the uh, styrene foam itself. But you can see that the still, it's actually still a little damp, um, untreated side, uh, the water basically ruined it. Um, this is just bare foam down here. Uh, but again, the treated side, the water just beaded, and I was able to, even after it sat on the surface of the treated side for about five minutes, was able to just wipe it off, and it's completely dry. So hopefully this will help kind of give a comparison contrast and uh, a better understanding of what the polyurethane does to... This is Dollar Store Foam Core. This is Adam's Foam Store, or Foam Core, uh, that I got at... Dollar General, I believe, is the store that is the one that is closest to me. Um, again, uh, it's basically, you saw the application for this particular test, uh, being that I was doing a small piece and it was a quick uh, demonstration. I didn't use the, the brush to apply the polyurethane, but ideally, you, if you're doing a large sheet or if you're doing a large number of parts, you would probably want to use the, a brush, uh, brush it on, uh, sort of the, the same way that you saw me wiping it on, and then uh, for each piece, you would then want to take a uh, rag or paper towel and wipe the excess off like you saw and then go on to the next piece. Uh, you would do both sides. This side's actually still completely untreated. 
Um, and uh, hopefully that answers a lot of the questions people have had. Uh, don't paint your models with a brush, bottom line. <laughs> so uh, enjoy. Thanks, Flight Test. Uh, quick shout out and thanks to uh, Josh, David, Josh, Chris, Eric, everybody in Flight Test. Uh, you guys are the ones who have brought me into this hobby. So thanks again. <laughs>